Yeah, good morning, Mr. Mayor. And uh, that was a very interesting answer to my question. And, and it was very interesting that you said that now in some places, traffic levels have met and exceeded levels before the whole um, coronavirus situation took place. And the reason for that is that you've put in these so-called street space measures, which have actually narrowed um, the street space available for vehicles to travel on. And that includes buses, factories and business vehicles. Um, that is causing congestion, Mr. Mayor. Um, will you accept that? And, and why have you done it? And uh, why are you continuing to do this? So, uh, actually, your, your analysis, I'm afraid, is, is wrong. I mean, we predicted some time ago a car-led recovery because we saw it around the world. You'll be aware other places around the world are ahead of us in relation to the spread of the virus because of the way it's, uh, uh, the, the epidemiology uh, has uh, worked. So we saw, for example, in the Far East, Khalid recoveries, and we were keen to avoid that. And the government deserved credit for also seeing that and seeking to avoid that, which is why they were investing, and we support them in this, in, in more walking, more cycling, and to keep public transport running at decent uh, levels. And so one of the reasons why people are using their cars uh, is because they've not yet been encouraged to walk and cycle or because they can't for very good reasons. And so we've got to assist them to make sure that if they're going to use their cars, they use cars that are zero emission because it helps with their air quality, or they use public transport when it's safe to uh, do so. And it's really important for that to happen because even with a slight increase in traffic in London, it leads to gridlock. And the problem with gridlock is not simply bad quality air. It means our emergency services. It means our deliveries. It means those who you know, really need to use uh, uh, the, the roads can't do so. And that's why I'd ask you to use any influence you have to avoid people using their cars if they can. Well, well I'm glad you actually acknowledged now, now that uh, emergency vehicles and delivery vehicles are getting uh, trapped in this congestion. And, and this is happening. And this is because of your, your street space program. And, and Mr. Mayor, you can say that I'm wrong, but, but actually I'm right. And uh, I'm right because I'm in touch with Londoners. And uh, I listen to the many and not the few, as it seems that you might do, Mr. Mayor. But there's one thing that is really disturbing about your street space programs and pop-up bicycle lanes is that there are barriers everywhere in many of these places between the pavement and the curbside and the roads. And this means that disabled people and wheelchair users that need to use buses and taxis uh, are not able to get in buses and taxis. I mean, Mr. Mayor, for example, how would you travel if you wanted to get a taxi from, say, Borough High Street, where there's barriers, um, to Park Lane, where there's barriers as well, and you're in a wheelchair, you simply can't do it. What would, what would someone in that situation have to do? Uh, can you give me an answer, Mr. Mayor? There's a number of issues in your, um, in your question. So in relation to uh, the barriers that you talk about uh, in uh, local authority streets, if you ask me what I would do, I would, I, would, I, I would politely and courteously, not in an insulting, threatening or abusive way, lobby the council to uh, look at the consequences of their policies and maybe suggest uh, that they amend their policies, tweak them, or in some cases, change their uh, policies. In some, some of the policies, the council may not unreasonably want to give it some time to bed in. Uh, we saw in Waltham Forest, for example, a few years ago, huge uproar when Waltham Forest introduced some of their policies, not dissimilar to what's been introduced in so, some low traffic neighbourhoods. And lo and behold, uh, a couple of years on, we've seen businesses flourishing and thriving because the evidence is the more people that walk and cycle, they pop into their shops and uh, shop there. And that communities that were previously against uh, their uh, mini Hollands are now firm advocates for it. And in fact, we've seen in the last few weeks some Londoners and some boroughs changing their minds in relation to being quite anti and now being quite positive. But it takes some time for it to uh, bed in. Uh, so we're doing, there's a number of different things taking place across our city. There is street space you refer to. There are school streets across um, our, our city. These are streets outside schools. There is additionally, you'll be aware, changes being made in relation to low traffic neighbourhoods. And there's additionally, you'll be aware, increased uh, cycling taking place uh, as well. Bishopsgate is a specific project that we're doing in partnership with the City of London. We'll have to wait and see how that, uh, uh, you know, progresses. Uh, I take on board uh, your advocacy of uh, those black cab drivers who take disabled passengers. It's a really important issue. One of the reasons there was an inequality impact assessment was to look into that. 
and we'll wait and see how the Finnish scheme addresses some of those uh, concerns uh, and ameliorates them as well.